Hey guys, it's Celestia, and today we're going to talk about why your art isn't getting noticed. This is something I've been talking about a lot lately, with friends, other creators, in my server, and so on. It's been on my mind even more since starting my channel here on YouTube, as that's very much influenced my perspective on this issue. But before I get started, let me be super clear that I don't mean any condescension with this topic. I'm a very, very small creator myself, and this video is not coming from the perspective of someone whose art has now been noticed by Senpai but rather from just another small artist who's still struggling to get recognition in the same way that I'm sure a lot of you are too. Which also means I'm not really in a position to give advice on fixing that problem, but I'm really not qualified to do like 90% of what I do. And that's basically my brand at this point, so I kind of have to stick with it. So why isn't your art getting noticed? Well, first off, I'm fairly confident when I say that it has very little to do with your art. I've said it before and I'll say it again, the quality of an artist's work doesn't have a lot of impact on the engagement it'll get online. I constantly see artists with more skill than I could ever imagine having get one like on an absolute masterpiece. And I mean, no offense with this, I see mediocre artists with tens of thousands of likes on an unfinished doodle. I'm not saying skill and quality are completely irrelevant, but in my experience, they're not what gets art noticed. Whether or not you and your art get noticed is completely dependent, in my opinion, on personal connection. That's always been the nature of art, but it's only been amplified and made into a problem by the way that the internet's huge and ever-growing pool of artists creating similar content has made it more difficult than ever to make a personal connection with your art, or at least more of one than all of the many, many artists that you're competing against. I briefly went over that problem in an older video of mine called How to Stay Confident as a Small Creator, but I really only covered the tip of the iceberg when it comes to how deeply it affects pretty much every artist. So let me explain what I mean a little better when it comes to personal connection being the deciding factor in whether or not your art gets noticed over the enormous competition. Once, I can only imagine, there was a time when making a beautiful piece of art would have been enough to sell that piece of art, or at least receive recognition for it. Not that it was ever easy to stand out against the throes of skilled artists all around the world, of course, but the internet has given artists an immense gift of millions of new ways to share their work. But it has also prompted the creation of an art market that's more oversaturated than it's ever been. Because it's so easy to share your art online, everyone is doing it. And the sheer volume of people out there drawing the same stuff you're drawing on the same platforms you're posting it on means that unfortunately, if you really want your art to stand out and get noticed, it's quite simply not enough to make something beautiful anymore. You can make a masterpiece of the highest caliber, but everyone's feeds are so full of other art that's just as good that high quality has become the standard and is no longer something that will make what you create stand out. Obviously, I'm not saying that you shouldn't try your best to make high quality art. All I really want to get across in explaining that is that if you're out there thinking that your art isn't getting noticed because your skill level isn't high enough, because it's not good enough, because you're not a good artist, that is not the case. It's just that while quality used to be enough to elicit a personal connection with art viewers or consumers, it's now become simply a baseline that art now has to both meet and exceed in order to make that connection. And that sucks, because if improving your art isn't enough to get any recognition for it, what the hell are you supposed to do? We're taught that if you're not succeeding at a thing, you just need to improve at it. So it's more than a little bit demoralizing, if not altogether crushing, to feel like no matter how good you are at a thing, it might never be enough to get you recognized for that thing. So if making good art isn't enough to prompt a personal connection between your work and your audience anymore, what can you do? Well, marketing and social media management do play a part, and while I don't mean to downplay their relevance to getting your art noticed, they're still not the most important aspects to focus on. An excellent marketing strategy and posting schedule will improve your engagement, but it's a tool that, while useful, hits a very significant cap on its effectiveness. You'll see small artists and huge artists with the exact same marketing strategies and posting schedules because they're good practices that do help and have an impact, but it still won't be able to establish a personal connection that, in my opinion, makes people pay attention to what you make. It's not just about how you advertise, it's also about what you're advertising. Okay, I've gone on a lot about personal connection being the key here, but I still haven't actually explained what I mean by that. So essentially, it's just, what would make you follow an artist that you'd never seen or heard of before? Everyone's answer is different, but the common denominator is that regardless of how their art does so, there's something about it that stands out against the sea of other art online, and that's the personal connection. The easiest examples are very unique, recognizable art styles, art of popular characters, a clear message being communicated by the art, etc. 
For example, everyone's heard of the age-old problem with fan art. If you draw a lot of fan art for a series, you'll build an audience that follows you because they like that series, not you or your art. Not exclusively, of course, but it's a significant issue. And it's because the personal connection they found with your art wasn't actually with your art itself, but with the content of it. And unfortunately, that's usually the case with most quote-unquote easy ways to build that connection. If your art is of a popular character, it'll get noticed only for as long as you continue to draw that character or other popular characters. If your art is noticed by eliciting a strong emotional response and communicating a message, the personal connection is established based on the message it communicates, rather than you or your art. So that audience is similarly very likely to lose interest in your future work if it doesn't communicate something they find as powerful or relatable. I'm sure you can see where I'm going with this. Ultimately, in this day and age, artists can't just attract an audience with their art. Because due to the overwhelming amount of it that's readily available, it's not enough to draw them in. You have to offer something more that draws them personally in. And no matter what that thing is, it's very difficult to maintain an audience that's actually following you for your art. I'm rambling here, but like, look at artists like Mew Tripled, who post relatable, funny, short comics. This is gonna sound harsh and I don't mean it to at all, but her comics do so, so well, not because her audience is fairly in love with her art itself. They do so well because her audience can relate to the content. There are some people, myself included, who enjoy her content in particular because of her art style and skill, as well as her manner of storytelling. But I can make an educated guess and say that a great deal of her engagement comes from people who don't care about her art itself nearly as much as they care about being entertained by the stories in her comics. Which brings me to the soul-crushing conclusion that I regret to deliver, which is that for your art to be noticed, you have to be constantly making art that's tailored in one way or another to what people want to see. There are exceptions, and there are people that will end up following you specifically because they love your art and want to see more of it. But the bottom line is that the majority of people whose art you see getting noticed more than your own are intentionally doing something to create and maintain a personal connection with the audience that is more than just their art itself. They're drawing popular characters, they're drawing relatable comics, they're communicating emotional or even controversial messages, they're making art commentary videos on YouTube to try to connect with their audience personally and directly rather than just make their art. Not that I'm projecting. But that is actually why starting my channel has given me so much to think about when it comes to this topic. I've been posting my art online for over a decade, and while I established something of a very small audience in that time, it was nothing compared to the number of people who have left such supportive and kind and heartwarming comments on my videos over the past year. And for a while, I couldn't figure out why. What was so different about showing my art in a video rather than just a picture that prompted such a change in response? And the more I thought about it and analyzed it, the more I came to realize that it's because I'm not just sharing my art anymore, I'm sharing myself. Through my commentary, I'm making some kind of personal connection with viewers that I wasn't before. And while, yes, that's been really helpful for building an audience and getting my art noticed, even on a very small scale, it actually just feels really good. It feels amazing to be able to connect with like-minded people and feel like I'm actually talking to someone about these things and sharing my passion with people. And it's given me a kind of fulfillment I didn't honestly know existed before this. But that's largely irrelevant to what I'm actually talking about, so before I start rambling about that forever, let's get back to the point. The more I thought about it, the more I realized that it was fundamentally the same reason that my sales at conventions are so much better than online. People aren't just seeing the art, they're meeting the artist. They're talking about it, they're connecting, and it's not as impersonal as just an Etsy page. And that, for some people, gives what they're buying more value. And I found that that's largely the same when it comes to people giving art attention. Whether they're buying a thing or using their time to look at it, like it, share it, comment on it, they're still investing something in it. And they're more likely to do that when your art is given additional value that all of the other art you're competing with isn't. And it's hard. It's exhausting. It can feel so hopeless to try to always be connecting with people and selling yourself as a product when you just want to make something beautiful that you love and have other people love it too. But whether we like it or not, that's kind of where we are now. So what am I actually advising here? Sell out and draw what your audience likes so that they pay attention to your art? No. I'm being pragmatic and sharing what I've learned about consumerism, but I'm not saying you should just cater to trends and make yourself miserable so that you can finally get some recognition. I'm also not saying that there's the right answer here, much less that I know it. If you want to just draw what you love regardless of any of this, do it. And you might honestly find success with that regardless of the odds or what people who think they know stuff on YouTube say. 
If you want to do whatever it takes to make a personal connection and get popular, do that. This video isn't how to get your art noticed, it's why your art isn't getting noticed. And that was a deliberate difference that I made very sure to include. Because while I've come to understand how the mentality of this system works to some extent, that does not mean I'm audacious enough to think I know how to make it work for me, much less anyone else. If you're gonna take away anything from what I've said here, let it be not that I'm giving you advice on how to handle it, but that I'm sympathizing with you as someone in the exact same system of having to treat art, a creative passion I pour my heart into as a business just to get a few likes on Twitter. What I can say though, is that starting this channel has taught me another significant thing about this. I spent a long time trying to connect with people through my art and get it noticed because, I mean, who doesn't want that? And I've done a lot of different things to try to make that happen. I made fan art until I bored myself right out of fandoms. I hopped on trends to try to use their popularity to squeeze some of it out for myself. But those things exhausted me, and it was a constant effort to try to become relevant by doing stuff I normally wouldn't. YouTube, though, has been completely different. I didn't go into YouTube trying to make a personal connection just to get my art noticed. I went into YouTube hoping to talk about stuff I was passionate about to people who are passionate about it too. And in doing so, I did make a personal connection that had an impact on my art's audience, but by doing something I genuinely loved because I loved it. So if there's any advice I can give here, it's this. If your art isn't getting noticed, don't try to force that personal connection with an audience by doing whatever you think is the most popular or likely to work. Experiment. Find ways to put more of yourself into what you're doing, whenever and however you can. And I genuinely believe that you'll find a way to connect with people and get noticed while still making yourself happy and making the art that you love. There's no right answer for everyone, but I truly do think that everyone can find the right answer for them if they keep at it and keep experimenting and trying new things. Ultimately, don't let it discourage you if you feel like your art isn't getting noticed. Yeah, the way things are now when it comes to getting noticed can really, really suck. But your art is not at fault for that. You're not at fault for that. And I believe with my whole heart that if you put love and passion into what you make and keep trying no matter how hopeless it can feel, you will succeed. And you'll succeed in a way that makes you happy. It's a long road, but your skill is not defined by the number of people that like your posts on social media. You're not alone in the struggle to stand out. And while the way things are sucks sometimes, your perspective on them doesn't have to. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, even if it probably wasn't the concrete solution I'm sure at least some of you were hoping I'd provide. That is kind of your bad for hoping I'd provide that though, given that the most noticed piece of artwork I have ever made is a doodle of Crazy Red from Animal Crossing quoting Aaron Hansen, but nonetheless. If you want to say in what I talk about next week, don't forget to vote in the Twitter poll linked in the description. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.